I'm nervous because everyone's like, Oh, if Morgan's crying in episode three, they're fucked for f season two. So yeah, thanks for that, guys. I know I bitched that no one told me about episode three, that it was going to be an emotional episode. But that didn't mean I want to know. I, I should have clarified. I didn't want to know. Ignorance is bliss, as they say. What's going on, guys? My name is Morgan, and welcome to or back to my channel. Today, we are starting season two of Good Omens. I didn't think I was really gonna get invested into this show, and it's been about three weeks since I finished season one. I bought the book. I did not technically read the book. I listened to the audiobook at work, and I finally finished that up, and then I was nervous because everyone commented on episode three being like, if Morgan's crying at episode three of season one, they're fucked for season two. So that made Made me feel real excited to start season two. Thank you guys so much. And yeah, I'm excited, but I'm also scared. And we're gonna see where this goes. Before we get into it though, I wanted to thank Angela who sent these adorable notebooks to my P.O. box. Look at them. It's Crowley and Azira Quail. How fucking cute is that? I love them so much. I started using one of them already for the the nightingale significance that I was writing down because I picked up on it after I had finished recording. So I'm already making great use out of this. Thank you so much, Angela. This was such a cute and thoughtful gift. And they're just so cute. And you know me, with my, I'm always taking notes. And if we're starting season two and we meet more characters, I'm gonna have to write down their freaking names so I can remember them. And yeah, so thank you so much, Angela. These are freaking adorable. If you want to send me stuff, my PO box is in the description. Before we get into it, if you want the full unedited, uncut version, version that is available over on the Patreon. If you want to follow me on social media, you could do so here. With all that being said, let's get into this. Oh, also, side note, because everyone said season two is going to be sad or I'm gonna cry, my Patreon and Discord <laughs> convinced me to make a good omens tissue box. Before the beginning. Okay, so before Earth, I'm assuming. Wait, this was- Wait, this was Crowley as an- Fuck you, man! God! I forgot all about this fucking bit. I forgot we fucking saw- Cause, listen, listen, people on YouTube, I accidentally watched this beginning bit because I mistook it with the downloads I had, and I was so confused because I didn't know any of these characters, but that's fucking Crowley! And- Oh! It's him as an A- Why am I- I'm already getting emotional! What the fuck? It's all making sense now! And he's holding the- it looks like the crank from his- his Bentley! Hi. Oh, he's so cute! Yes? Was that oh! You? Oh, hi, yeah, uh, hello. I'm a zero film. Nice meeting. Okay, here goes! Oh, this was the first meeting! Ah, oh, it was the first meeting to stop it! Stop it! I, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for season two. I'm not ready. I'm already getting emotional. It's not even sad. Mmm. Let there be light. Oh, he's making the galaxy. Oh, the star systems or whatever it was. Wait, was, was Alpha Centauri included in this? Because I remember in season one, he said Alpha Centauri. I helped make that one. Like, was that the creation of Alpha Centauri as well? He's so excited! Look at him! He's so cute! Look at you, you're gorgeous. Look at that! Look! Oh! Did, did he- did, did, did his zero fell hope he was saying that to him? Uh, <laughs> hold on. Look at you, you're gorgeous. Did you look at the face! Look at the face! And I think you've done an excellent job. <laughs> but these ones are only starting out. A few million years to bake, and then stars everywhere. <laughs> He's so enthusiastic. We'll be shutting this all down again in about six thousand years. There's nothing. Why? That doesn't even give the full potential of this thing to happen. Why? Well, six thousand years. This is before Earth. Earth's about six thousand years old. Is that because that was the whole like great plan with the Antichrist? Ow! Oh. Look at him. He's so sad. You've heard of Earth? Oh, it was Earth. Okay, that's that's why it's only six thousand years. Now that's where the people. The people. We're, coming, we're going to start out with a breeding pair. And then pretty soon there'll be oodles of them. Oodles! Well, they exist. 
just so that the people can look up into the night sky. That's easy. It's <laughs> yeah. Not the universe, not just most of it won't even be visible from Earth. Yeah, that's Earth true. The universe, so the view's better. Oh, poor Crowley. Look, boss, this is a really, really terrible idea. Well, I suspect that would be considered. Is this is? Don't tell me we're gonna see how Crowley fell. And I swear to God, if it's something stupid like Crowley questioning. I'm gonna be so pissed off. I'm gonna be so fucking pissed off. I don't believe the Almighty has actually created a suggestion box. Why not, though? And furthermore, I don't think it's our place to start suggesting that there should be a suggestion box. It's interesting, though, to see Aziraphale's kind of character development, because obviously this was like 6,000 years ago, but he went from like, don't question it, to in season one, even though he wouldn't really admit it, questioning why there had to be a war, what it all was for. And I know technically Aziraphale wasn't questioning God. He was mostly questioning the angels and the great plan. But still, like, seeing this development in how Aziraphale used to be compared to how we know Aziraphale now is just wild. Oh, we love a character development, though. You can't just create a universe. Look at how scared Aziraphale is. Stop right the pinky blue bit in the corner of the, the nebula. Yeah, it's very... He's like, divert, divert. I hate to see you getting into any trouble. Mm, thanks for your help. And thanks for your advice. I wouldn't worry, though. How much trouble can I get into just for asking a few questions? I swear to God, I swear to fucking God. If he fell because he asked questions, I will square up. I become so protective over these two, it's not even funny. Editing Morgan here. I didn't pick up that Crowley shielded Aziraphale from the stars in this moment and that it was a callback to episode one of season one. I wish I had gotten it because the tears that came to my eyes when I did this rewatch, nobody talked to me. <laughs> Oh, and we got a new intro sequence. Let's fucking go. All right, so now we're going to be picking apart and taking on all these rides as well. So this is going to be a bunch of hullabaloo for the time being until it inevitably makes sense in later episodes, I'm guessing. I feel like I'm on an ass trip all over again. The other one I got used to. I think that's the bookshop. Uh, it doesn't say AZ fell in comp. Oh, that looks different. It looks like... Does that look like a record shop? Fuck it, I don't know. Give me coffee or give me something. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Did I see? Did I see the Bentley? Oh, there's the Bentley. Dumb. Oh, that's a. That's that's that is a. That's different. Like instead of it being off the edge of a cliff, it, it formed like a pyramid of miscellaneous things. It seems. Okay, we're back. We're back to the present day. I'm so glad the bookshop's okay. You have no idea. You have no idea. Hello, Jack. I got your name. I hear you don't own me in the background. I thought you... Oh, is this well, a mu it's music it's shop? It's not entirely my fault. I'm not collecting the rent. Wait, Aziraphale is renting out properties to other people? And a music shop owner? I like that they seem to have similarities with this person collecting... It seems to be collecting music. I'm sure they also sell it. Because Aziraphale, while technically it's a shop, he doesn't like to sell his books. It's mostly just a glorified collection. He tries not to sell actual books on. That I've learned. Maybe if you were out of here, where would I get my records? I nearly oh. 78. I don't have the money. Maggie, what if I were to just take these Shostakovich records without paying for them? And we'll call it even. I owe you thousands of pounds in rent. Those records would cost you eight. Pounds and 75 pennies. And 75 pennies? Oh, I can. I'm very good at forgiveness. He's so tired! I know exactly what I'll be doing for the next 21 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love a zero bell. Oh, look at... Oh, this is so wholesome. I feel like the season's gonna destroy me. It's luring into me into a false sense of comfort and happiness. My eyes are already tearing up and I don't even know why. I think my body can sense shit. That is not your seat, sir. Who are you? The clarinet can make beautiful music. You are. <laughs> it can make beautiful music. Is this code word for Wrong something? Bench. Wrong bitch! <laughs> I was gonna say, that is a Zerfell seat. Who do you think you are? I brought your mail. 
Anything interesting? Don't give them bread, you idiot! Ducks shouldn't eat bread. I love <laughs> I love how much Crowley loves ducks. Him and Lucifer and Hasman Hotel would be such good friends. Even the rubber duck comment, while technically that was a zero fell in season one, just that he talks about ducks so much, and that a zero fell knows him so well that he talks about ducks when pretending to be Crowley. I love this. I love this little like quirk of his. I am now health representative in London. Oh. I keep planning complicated strategic strikes to spread misery and panic among the humans. They come up with something themselves, which is so much worse than anything. Yep, that's humanity! Yeah. When I, I was listening to the book, it's like humans come up with so much more fuck sh of shit than the demons do. It's like, why do they even bother with the demons then? Like, humanity's doing it fine on their own. <laughs> humanity is sinning and killing and just doing atrocious acts on their own. They don't even need the demons. Let, let the demons just do what they want. <laughs> The angels, they gotta put the angels in overtime to try and convince people to not do fucked up shit. Up, things up. Up, up. Up, up. Oh boy. If you get wind of anything through your contact in the bookshop, let me know. Nah, they don't talk to him anymore. You don't talk to him! You don't talk to him! I'm not believing that for a fucking second. Okay, someone reached out to me on Instagram and actually made me aware of this, otherwise I would not have caught it. Apparently, Crowley says they don't talk to him anymore. Apparently, a lot of people, myself included, thought it was I don't talk to him anymore. But I'm gonna leave the bit in anyway, because it's kind of funny to see how much I'm in denial and how much that would have hurt me. But I do know now it's they don't talk to him, meaning heaven. If this, if this is what you guys meant in season two is them not talking to each other, I'm done. I'm done. I can't do that. I can't. I've been reading fanfics nonstop, man. I will not stand for this. Let me just go back to make sure that little bit I understood. I don't understand why they won't just deliver them to your car. They won't deliver them to your car. Is Crowley not in his apartment building anymore? Did he move into his car? Because why, why else would... I, I don't know. Build. Uh, they don't talk to him anymore. If I learn anything... That you might find useful, I'll tell you. And in return, you tell me what I need. I don't know if I trust you. I don't know if I trust you. Mm -mm. Frozen peas. What? That's what you feed ducks. Frozen peas. <laughs> We're back to the ducks. And it's good for them too. It's good for them too. <laughs> There's your public service announcement. Do not feed ducks bread. Feed them frozen peas. You're a skinny latte. You remember let me start writing these characters' names down. Hold, hold on. Da, 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 da. I, I, I regret putting the Nightingale notes on that first page because now every time I open it, I'm like, the Nightingale is love, <laughs> and it makes me emotional. Okay, so we got Maggie, which is the record shop owner, and then I'm guessing we're gonna get this character's name soon. Gabriel, what the fuck are you doing here? Are you naked? Wait, don't. That was, that was, that was. <laughs> I paused. I paused. That's such a bad part. Wait, I thought angels. Where's my book? Book. Book. All right. Hold on. I'm going to reference the book. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. But it was something about angels don't have sexes unless the effort is made or something like that. So I know they're, the angels are given bodies or at least a Xerophel is. So I don't know if that changes anything technically. When Gabriel comes down, would he get a body as well equipped with such things? Because I, I don't know. Otherwise they're gonna realize there's a person walking around with no genitalia and that's probably gonna cause a couple questions. Okay, I can't find it, but there's vaguely something about that in this book. I know that for a fact. But why, also why is Gabriel walking down the street stark naked? He's so cute, look at him. What's the deal with the box, dude? That's so relatable though, that's me whenever someone bothers me during my me time, I'm like, fuck off. love to find out let's get you some clothes too buddy is and also who you are and also do you have amnesia who I am. and also why you're naked yeah who told you i was naked? that was my first question no <laughs> no Sticky. poor zero fell 
Tripper deliverogram. You just made that up. Yeah. Stream sanction. Yes. Is this Michael again? Cheated. New hairdo, Michael? I'm me. I just don't know who me is. You see? What the fuck happened? But no, someone who looks like you. Proceeding with caution. Good idea. You don't recognize me. Honestly, this might be a good thing. I'm just saying. Can we get all the angels to forget? <laughs> And all the demons and these two could just live their happy lives. Also, are we going to see Crowley and Aziraphale interact at all this episode? Because I need that. Thank you very much. No. Sorry. Might be a good thing, then, like I said. You know what it's like when you when you don't know anything at all and yet you're totally certain that everything would be better if you were just near one particular person? No. Well, certainly not. Okay. I, I have no idea what that feels like. <laughs> moment he was so cold we need to watch that again we need to watch that again everything would be better if you were just near one particular person no <laughs> i have no idea what that's that's fucking go. but so long as i came here but something terrible might not happen to me it's almost like a zero falls a safe space for everyone that's something terrible I mean, it's doing like one thing here. wait is this the plan of what upstairs had going on is this a grand scheme? I don't know. I just remembered what that demon said to Crowley in the park. I just know that it's incredibly awful and that that's why I had to come here and give you the thing. Oh, the box, the box. What thing do you have to give me? I don't seem to have anything on me. Do you think it's important? Well, you, you just said. <laughs> the patience of a saint, this one. Something terrible happening. Really? What? I don't know. <laughs> Poor <laughs> Seraphel. The box. Yeah, find the box, find the box. What's in the fucking box? What the fuck was that? Something just moved. That looks like a bug, ugh. Whatever's going on concerns Gabriel. Yeah, okay. This is in trouble, that's so sad. Is it? <laughs> He's like, what a pity. <laughs> Gabriel is in trouble, and especially the way he knows Gabriel would have spoken to Aziraphel when Crowley was disguised as Aziraphel, like the shit he said to him. He's probably like overjoyed something awful's happened to Gabriel, and you know what? I can't blame him because I'm kind of in the same boat. I'm like, you dare talk to my soft boy first about the gut, and then the way you talk to him in heaven when you try to put him in the hellfire? Go to hell, literally, Gabriel, go to hell. Oh, the doors of the- I just realized the, the doors of the Bentley open weirdly. Like, they open backwards instead of forwards. There's nothing in here. There's a fa- there's a you bug me? fly? You're funny. I love you. Oh. Thank you. I- He's like, can't say it back. Nope. Uh, you you bring Why did you bring the fox? I don't like that the fly is in there. The fly feels weird to me. The- you know, it's, they're putting a lot of attention on this fly. There, it was an empty box. There's only a box. And then we hear the buzzing. But I don't know what that would mean. Why would they have Gabriel lose his memory and then deliver a, a box with a bug in it? Then what am I? Well, you're, um, uh, Lord Jim. 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 Oh, Jim. Oh, Jim. <laughs> oh, Jim. I love it. James. Cool. I love it. He loves everything. Forget about Gabriel. <laughs> I'll try but I find it kind of hard to forget things. Do you indeed? Well then, what box? Hello, it's me. Don't say anything. Is he, is he living in his car? He's got his plants. Excuse me? Again with the fly. What, what is up with the fly? Out of his mouth go burning lamps and sparks of leaping fire. Job 4119. Oh, okay, they were gonna make it enlarge. I never know when they're gonna enlarge something in the show and when they're not. What is happening? Who are you? I'm so lost. <laughs> Crowley driving like a madman once again. <laughs> I love it. Right, what's the problem? Problem? Who said there was a problem? Tone of voice. 
You have three reasons for calling me. You're bored, you need to tell someone about something clever you did before you pop, or something's wrong. This was your something's wrong voice. It's nice to tell someone. The fact he knows his different voices! Ah! I'm living! I'll take a big cup, put six shots of espresso into it, nothing else. That sounds fun. Take it, calm you down. Not really. Yeah. Not really! You sell the calms people down. Eccles Cakes, how's your naked man friend? He's not... He's not... <laughs> He's certainly not naked anymore. You're a dark horse, Mr. Fell. Are you a bookseller too? Not the fucking really look, the fucking look, Crowley game. <laughs> I want to watch that again. There's so many rewatches in this episode. I'm so sorry. I'm having a blast. How's your naked man friend? He's not. He's not Mike. <laughs> He's certainly not naked anymore. Are you a bookseller too? Not even at gunpoint. Not even at gunpoint. People keep mistaking Crowley. First it was um, when the, the bookshop was burning and they're like, do you own this establishment? He's like, do I look like I own a bookshop? And now he's like, not even at gunpoint. Not even if you paid me. <laughs> he's so offended. It's so funny. Crowley, he and I go back a long time. Charmed. You do. Something big is going on in heaven. Do you know anything about it? Possibly a little. And why don't we go into your shop and discuss it there? Because um, Gabriel's there, but he doesn't miss Gabriel. Not Has this got anything to do with why we aren't in your bookshop right now? Yeah. Is it something I can help you with? <laughs> Just want to say, you're an angel. Oh, nothing of the sort. Um, Eccles cake? Uh, purely selfish action. The way he just holds his things, no questions asked. I'm sorry, I'm reading into this so much. I love it. Actually, I brought you something because Nina Simone and your name is Nina. Oh, your name's Nina. That was okay, Nina. I don't have anything to play it on. No. Right. Of course. Skinny oh. Loves. oh, no, I'd be up all night. Uh, just a, a herbal tea, mint tea. Oh, oh, although their camera looks nice. We're getting older. Remember when we used to party and stay up all night? Now we're all in bed by ten. I didn't go to parties. We were a teenager, weren't you? you wait. Oh, I I thought they knew each other for a while when when okay when Nina said that I was like, wait, do these fucking two know each? Are we gonna get another? I. I don't, I'm I'm getting I'm getting vibes. Oh, I hit my microphone. I need to stop hitting my microphone. I'll wait for the day someone just makes a compilation of every time I've hit my fucking microphone. But... Vibes. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have brought over the LP without asking. It's been a long day. I need to finish closing the shop. My partner's expecting me home. Oh, you... Uh, you have a partner. Who really doesn't like it when I'm late? So, hard choices, mint tea or chamomile. <laughs> maybe, maybe I was, maybe I was a little mistaken. But, use the word partner. Often a sign of a queer relationship. Putting that away for later. I guess who Shax was asking me about. But I think perhaps I will. Jim? Jim? Jim. Do we know Jim? Do we know Jim? Ah! <laughs> 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 like a Gabriel. What's happened to him? I don't know. Ask him. I have. <laughs> 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 the panic! Properly. so much he's such a fucking mood oh my god i'm loving season two so far what are you doing <laughs> in this shop? i am dusty just so okay he's freaked we can just take him somewhere and leave him there take him where the crucial part of the plan isn't the taking him somewhere it's not bringing him back again <laughs> bundle them into Bentley, I'll drive to something terrible was going to happen to him. All the more reason for him to be nowhere near us when it does. I just... Holy speaking facts! Angel, this is the supreme archangel of all heaven. You also tried very hard to cast you into hellfire and destroy you. He yeah. is not our friend. I don't think he really has any friends. Exactly. Yes, exactly. What does your exactly mean? <laughs> I feel like your exactly and my exactly are different exactly. A little bit, a little bit. Friends. What I need is for him to be nowhere near me and the precious, peaceful, fragile existence that I have carved out for myself here. I 
thought we carved it out for ourselves. So did I. <laughs> I don't know why I'm finding this so entertaining, but I am. But we carved it out for ourselves. Stop it! Stop it! I'm gonna be on fanfiction leader. Leader. F <laughs> the guys are scrambling my thoughts once again. I'm going to have to go on fanfic. Fact. Uh, hey. Guys, the f this is what happens when you put a couple I ship in front of me and I am allowed to feed into it. This is what happens. My brain just gets scrambled. Fifth attempt at saying this word at the sentence. I'm going to go on AO3 later and read post season one fan fiction. I don't know why that was so hard for me to say for the past two minutes, but it was. I'm having so much fun. I don't. I feel like this is gonna betray me. Season isn't supposed to be fun. Everyone told it was gonna make me cry. I, I should not be getting comfortable. You're at liberty to go. I don't think he can though. I don't think he could no. leave you to do your own thing. If season one taught us anything, he can't leave you. When he thought you died, Aziraphale, he drank himself into a stupor. He did not go to Alpha Centara. It's Centauri, Cent whatever. Oh. No, I would love you to help me. I am asking you to help me take care of him. <laughs> they adopt yet another child. <laughs> Technically, Gabriel's not a child, but he's acting like one because he's fucking forgotten everything. <laughs> it's like, how many times are these two going to adopt a child? First it was, they were the godfathers of Warlock, and then it was kind of that way with Adam, and now it's Gabriel. No, I won't. No, that's such a load of bullshit. I'm wrong with this one. Yeah, I'm- I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that at all. Is he gonna turn around? Is he gonna turn around? No? Oh, I'm surprised. Didn't that blow six shots of espresso? He's smoking. There's no law against it. He can smoke it. Oh, he's literally smoking! I mean, look at him, he's smoking. Oh, I can't do this, I'm just so angry! Is this a fucking fan fiction? What fan fiction trope did I just walk into? Oh no, the door's locked. It looks like we're gonna be getting to know each other very well. It's like, it's the same thing of, oh no, there's only one bed. I guess we'll just have to snuggle and look lovingly into each other's eyes. Whatever could happen. Hold on, I wanna go back to see the whole thing with Crowley again. Is that not, is that like a hissing? I know, I know he's like a snake. And sometimes he hisses when he loses control of himself in the book. Was that a hiss? I think I understand you rather well, Michael. You're and that is Michael! No question of replacing the Supreme Archangel. Who, Michael or Gabriel? You are the Archangel you. Right now, as of this moment, heaven does not have a Supreme Archangel. There is all so do they not know what the fuck happened to Gabriel? The fuck? Someone's gotta give the orders. And that's you. Yeah, I don't trust you for a second. Michael, out of all the fucking archangels, Gabriel included, I trust you the least. You give off this weird vibe and I don't like you. I don't fucking like you. First of all, you were the one that was going down to hell to give the holy water. And you've just always had this weird vibe and I don't trust it, okay? Michael, no, just no. You are my least favorite of the archangels. All of us are led by me. I am duty officer. And you are? Oh, no one. I, I mean, technically, Muriel, 37th order Scrivener, but, you know. Muriel? Like, Curse the Cowardly Dog Muriel? I found something by the lift to down on the floor. A material object. In heaven. That's impossible. I know. Apparently not. Did Gabriel bring it up? One thing I've noticed about the difference between heaven and hell, I, don't, I didn't pick up the name of the person in like the futuristic wheelchair, but they seem to be a lot more technologically advanced upstairs than they are downstairs. Cause I didn't even really think of it until just now, but down there, 
it's very grimy and old and they have like old, I think it was old computers or like cubicles or something like that. And their phones are like line phones. Whereas I just remembered Michael has an actual like cell phone that glows and this person in the wheelchair has like a few, one of the futuristic ones, it hovers and it also has like a joystick to control it. So I'm finding that interesting, the differences between heaven and hell. That's something that just clicked in my mind. Are you guys afraid of it? Just a matchbox? I think he's going to Earth. Oh, Gabriel? Do you not know where Gabriel went? And there's another fly! What is the deal with the flies in this episode? Why are there so many? Wait, is Beelzebub gonna show up? Hello, traitor. Oh. Yep, it's Beelzebub. Wait, 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 wait. There's a lot of things with flies in this episode. There's a fly in Aziraphale's bookshop. Is that Beelzebub? Is that part of Beelzebub or like a spy or like the equivalent of a hidden camera? I thought it was weird that there was just the fly in the box. Are heaven and hell working together again? I don't know. I, Cause like, Beelzebub and Gabriel met in the season one finale, and they seemed to have some similarities, or, or you know, having to explain the heaven to back down, having to explain the hell to back down. So they've like met each other. Are they working to get? Is I don't know what I. <sighs> I don't know. I'm so fucking confused. I'm so confused. I feel like this is season one all over again. Where I'm like, who are these people? These new people? What is going on? I'm so confused. Ah, that's fucking disgusting. Wait, is this is this a new is this a new um actor for Beelzebub? I think so. Oh, okay. Such a pity that what if I said hell was willing to forget everything you did? That we were willing to accept you back, no questions asked, with a hefty promotion. I don't trust you. Oh, no, it's so much. We think someone must be hiding him from us. Why would he be hiding from you, though? You know, what? And why do you want to know where Gabriel is? How did you find out? If the fly's in the shop and it's working for Beelzebub, Beelzebub would know that Gabriel's at Aziraphale's shop. Unless they're playing dumb and they actually know where he is. But because they don't want to blow their cover, they're like, we don't know where Gabriel. I feel like I need to get my red string out and try to start connecting shit. Crowley, you know her better than anyone. He might take them up on that because he doesn't want to deal with Gabriel and doesn't want him near Aziraphale. You could be a Duke of Hell. I don't think he wants that. I'm hearing that anybody they find involved in this affair will be dealt with. Oh no! Oh no! <sighs> Oh no, fuck. They know exactly, they, they know what they're doing! Wow. He's worried for a zero fell! Extreme sanctions. Extreme sanctions? What the fuck does that mean? Is a thing? That's just something we used to joke about, frighten the cherubs. No, it exists. To flatten the cherubs? What? Anyone found involved in Gabriel's disappearance will be erased from the book of life. They won't just be gone. They will never have existed. That'll, that'll, that, I don't teach them a lesson, right? Oh, fuck! Oh, is there yep. a file? What have you done? <laughs> oh, fuck. Go protect your boyfriend! I don't drink. Just never wanted to. Don't like the taste. Well, That's a mood, Gabriella. <laughs> no judgment. Good. I've enough judgment in my life already. When my phone goes back. First there was the partner. The word partner instead of boyfriend or girlfriend. Then there was the word lots of judgment. I'm sensing a queer character. So there's going to be about 100 worried texts from Lindsay. Hmm. Who was right? Who was right? Let's fucking go another queer character. I'm here for this shit. Perhaps someone at home who cares where you are. Yeah, well, Lindsay likes it if I text when I'm going to be more than 10 minutes late. Fair enough. Funny, I was sort of hoping we'd have a chance to talk. Now, here we are. Look, thing. Here we both are. This is such a fucking fanfic trope. <laughs> Not old fashioned lover boy! I've been listening to this song so much lately! There's only room for one of us in this line, and it's not you. Tell him, Crowley. records nobody buys records anymore the record shop was opened by my great-grandmother in the 1920s 
Originally, our shop was in a corner of Mr. Fell's bookshop. Oh, Look at that strut. Signs. It's him. Oh, really? My bad. Ah, just ah, let there be light. <laughs> Nina! Oh, boy. Lindsay is not happy. Like I knew, I knew he'd come back to me. Really, Aziraphale, you saw him. I'm back. <laughs> yes, I can see that. What is this weird dynamic they have going on right now? I said the wrong thing, sort of an apology, or can we take that as said? Quite like the apology, actually. You were right. Not good enough. I want a proper apology. Like the little dance. I don't do the dance. I did the, the dance! dance in 1650, in 1793, 1941. Fine. Wait, wait, he apologized every single time? Hold, hold on. I did the, I was wrong dance in 1650. In oh, he, okay. I was like, there's no way you made him do the I'm sorry dance for 19, no, 1793 and 1941. Cause that was not as, that was not Crowley's fault, but okay, Aziraphale did the I'm sorry dance. I was about to be very upset. I was about to be very upset. Okay. <laughs> I was like, we're not gonna do that here. We're not gonna have Crowley apologize for everything. <laughs> I love that they have the little makeup dance. This is, oh, I can't wait to see this. You were right. You were right. I was wrong. <laughs> Keep him here and hide him. From who? Everybody. Heaven, hell, humanity. We do it together. We make it so nervous. Where's the fly? Where's the fly? I'm still nervous about that fucking fly. I don't trust any of this. There's too many factors in this bookshop that weren't there. We have Gabriel and we have the fly. I don't like it. Little miracle. Nobody can spot him even if they're looking for it. No, I mean, especially if they're looking for it. Where did you come back from? Outside. Outside? Can I see the outside? No, no, no. No, you're not allowed outside, buddy. No, absolutely not. No, 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 no. You need to stay here inside the bookshop. Yeah, no outside for you. Here. Just COVID here. rules. Stay inside. Which did half a miracle. And I could hide him from your former people and you could hide him from mine. You could barely move the dials. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Yeah. I need to make this the tiniest, most insubstantial, fractional half a miracle we have ever- So have they not performed any miracles since that whole ordeal with heaven and hell happened however many years ago it was? I think I know what's going on. Watch. I don't go to the outside, and now I have two friends. I am not your friend. <laughs> Hey, sir, it is half a miracle. Oh. <laughs> no one would have noticed a thing. Fuck! It didn't work. How did you know it was half a miracle? Quickly, miracle, go outside, go outside, go to other towns. Miracle, miracle, miracle. Throw them off. Miracles everywhere. God damn it! We may not know where Gabriel is, but I'll tell you what we do know. There's a former angel in this up to his bookshop owning neck. <sighs> Fuck! Why did I think for a second that might work? <laughs> Stress fluff the hair! I, I'm nervous! Listen, I missed out on the nightingales. Now I'm gonna listen through the outros, even if it's nothing important. The nightingales taught me a lesson. You gotta stick around for the Good Omens outros sometimes. Cause sometimes the songs will fuck you up. If I didn't add that nightingale song to my liked songs on Spotify, I would have never picked up the fucking significance of it. And I just hit my microphone again. <laughs> God damn it. Well then, that was episode one of season two. Wild. <laughs> Wild to put lightly. There are so many things going on. I still don't know where to- be. I have such trust issues. And with this show especially, I don't trust that fly. That fly was weird. The fact that Gabriel went to this bookshop with a fly in a box. Or it might have been an empty box and the fly just cr 
crawled in last second. Gabriel seemingly doesn't remember anything. No one seemingly knows where Gabriel is, hell or heaven, but for some reason, hell wants to know where Gabriel is. They also picked up on the small miracle. It seems heaven and hell left those two alone for however long has passed since the not so Armageddon. The, the Armageddon that didn't. I don't know what it's called. I, I, I got questions. I don't know how much time has passed. I don't know what is happening. And there's new characters. We got introduced to Maggie, Shax, Nina, and Muriel. I don't think we got a name for the angel in the wheelchair yet. This this season's off the- I'm already liking it more than season one. I don't know if that's because there's a lot more- there's a lot more Aziraphale and Crowley. <laughs> that's probably why. <laughs> We've already got some queer representation with Nina, so let's fucking go with that. That is going to be it for this video, guys. I'm so excited for season two, and if you want the full unedited, uncut version of this reaction, it's about an hour and 20 minutes long. <laughs> I went off a lot. This episode was only like 45 minutes. How did I talk that much? <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you thought about this episode in the comments below. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.